Hey, how are you doing? This is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome into a live session. Uh, this is an Ask Me Anything session, a question and answer session if you prefer. First one of 2022. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I've been busy. I've been busy with uh, properties. Uh, basically, I spend me my days uh, these days cleaning pools and up on roofs fixing water tanks and things. Um, but people have been telling me they miss these and they'd like more of them. So that's my New Year's resolution to try and to do more of these and uh, for us to spend a bit more time together. No big dramatic sales pitch or presentation or big debate or anything. I just thought try and get together regularly and have a coffee together. Uh, much like, uh, you know, AA would do a weekly or daily meeting. So if you have any questions at all about quitting alcohol, about problem drinking, um, then post them up wherever you're watching, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. I can see your comments. Uh, Anthony Joy, good morning and welcome on in. David, welcome in. Good to have you here. Um, anything at all. So if you're if you were doing great and kind of Christmas and New Year threw you off, or if COVID has just been a complete nightmare for you and you don't know how to get restarted, uh, or maybe the opposite is true. Maybe um, maybe you're nailing this. Maybe you're three months, six months, maybe three years sober, and your life has just changed dramatically, and you want to share that with other people and share your tips and secrets, then that's great as well. Um, good morning, Ricky. Thanks, Craig. I find your pod podcast helpful. Uh, I was about to fall off the wagon until I found your podcast. That's great to hear. Mick the Legend is here. Good morning, Mick. Um, great to have you here. Um, so, yeah, any questions you've got, just post them up. Uh, I thought we'd also have a look at some books as well. It seems to be that time of year when you throw yourself at a new project, a new habit. Uh, a lot of people this time of year are, you know, talking about quitting smoking, giving up drinking, going on a diet, going to the gym. Um, so I think the way to do that is to totally engross yourself in it and give yourself as much of the good information as you can. Anthony says he's 623 days, three days sober. That's amazing. That's so good. But still gets that evil clown bothering him. It's annoying, isn't it? So let's have a look at some of these books. By the way, I can see your comments, but when I'm looking at these books, I won't be able to. So I promise I'll come back to them. So if you've got anything that's leaping to mind, uh, then post it up uh, below where you're watching. Um, I think, you know, the way you quit drinking is by changing your belief structure around the drug. That seems to be the fundamental key to this for me, because you may think that you have what they call an addictive personality, but the chances are you probably don't. And whether such a thing even exists is debatable, because if you had this addictive personality, then you would be addicted to everything, wouldn't you? You, would, you wouldn't be able to do anything in moderation. If it was built into your personality that you were just addicted, then you wouldn't be able to do anything normally. You'd be addicted to mashed potato. You'd be addicted to water. You'd be addicted to everything. So I think it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's just a get out of jail free card to say, oh, you know, my drinking is not really my problem. It's, it, I can't help it. I've got an addicted personality. It's not true, I don't think. Uh, and also, you know, this is not a weakness of your personality. This is not a weakness of your character because if it was, then you'd be choosing better drugs, wouldn't you? I mean, alcohol is a pretty poor drug when, it come, when you think about it. Why do people drink alcohol? Well, firstly, to get that kind of buzz, that euphoria. Secondly, to escape reality. Um, secondly, to kind of loosen inhibitions and that sort of stuff. It does all of those, but pretty poorly compared to other drugs. So if this was a weakness of your personality, you would be going for the good stuff, wouldn't you? You'd be taking heroin and cocaine and all, you know, all these stronger drugs. So why don't you? And what I often say, the reason you don't is because you don't believe that adding them into your life would be a benefit. If you drink alcohol right now, you believe alcohol gives you something. You believe it is a benefit. And so the way out of this is to change your programming, to change your belief structure around the drug. Uh, let's say to Niall. Um, Niall, uh, I'm watching on Facebook at the moment, 20 days in. I've been away working, which has made it easier. I'm home now and almost enjoy looking at a beer or whiskey, knowing I don't crave it or need it. That, my friend, is freedom. Congratulations. Um, Nick says, I had to pick my daughter up last night from her first 
W. Uh, passed out, covered in sick. Great. I was annoyed last night, but this morning I woke up thinking that it was a good reminder of what it does. Ah, I see you've corrected it here. Uh, her first works outing. Yeah. Yeah. One of the hardest things, Mick, I think, is seeing people you love in the grips of alcohol. That's that's almost harder than looking back at what it did to you, isn't it? When you see people you love and you see what it's done to them, I think that really hurts. Uh, I'll keep flicking back so I can see the comments. I just want to talk about these books because, like I said, changing your belief structure uh, is the secret uh, to escaping. And anyone can read any one of these books. And you might agree with it all. And you might think, oh, that was a great book. But it doesn't mean your belief structure has changed. It, it needs a bit more work than that. There is no magic bullet. There's, there's nothing you can read and then suddenly you're cured. It would be lovely if I could say to you, just buy my book, read it, and then that's all your problems gone. But we know that's not true. And it's true for all of these books here. None of these, despite the claims of some of them, have the solution to stopping drinking on their own. This is a journey that you need to encompass as much good information as possible. So I just thought I'd have a quick uh, look through what Amazon is offering up when you do a search for quit drinking and see what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent. Uh, Alan Carr, quit drinking without willpower, uh, comes up top. Alan Carr, of course, famous for stopping people smoking rather than drinking. Um, but he has, you know, He's dead now, of course, but he did have a great uh, system uh, and theory about all this, uh, specifically when it comes to smoking. And I think what they've done really is they've kind of taken that system and rolled it out to everything they can think of because there's Alan Carr's stop gambling, stop cocaine, stop alcohol, live mindfully. It's, it's all the same system, but kind of <laughs> replacing the words, I guess. Uh, but it's still very good, well worth a read. And look, it gets great reviews. Um, Jack Canfield's 30 day sobriety solution. I didn't like it at all. Did not work for me in the slightest. Um, I don't know why, but that sometimes happens. You know, sometimes you'll find a book that everyone else raves about. You try it and you, you just hate it. Uh, and he gets very good reviews for it. But just for me, the 30 day sobriety solution just did not hit home at all. Um, Jerry Dorsman, how, how to quit drinking without AA. Not a fan of that book, to be honest with you. Um, watch out for these supplements that you keep seeing peddled around alcohol. And it's more and more common these days. You'll see these, uh, like if we go down a bit further here, I know there's one here, anti-alcohol tablets. <laughs> for the most part, garbage. You know that old saying, if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Uh, th that is true. There is no tablet. There is no tablet, prescription or non-prescription, that will make this problem go away for you. I'm sorry. It would be lovely if there was. If you could go to your doctor, you could write your prescription, and suddenly your drinking problem goes away. It does not exist. And it does not appear to be something that's on the horizon either. So just be careful for these things uh, these tablets and things that you see online that claim to fix your problem by just popping a pill. 99% chance they don't work, if you ask me. Also, watch out for things that um, claim to fix your problem without any active participation on your part. You'll see these hypnosis tracks. Quit drinking while you sleep. You put the hypnosis track on, you go to bed, and you wake up a non-drinker. doesn't work. How can it work? You're asleep. You're not conscious. You're not ingesting the information. Uh, and there's a reason these things have, you know, have remained a gimmick and have never taken on. You'll have seen them. Learn French while you sleep. There's a reason that you've never met anyone who's learned a foreign language by listening to a tape while they, while they sleep. Because it, it's just a gimmick. It doesn't work. It's garbage. Um, but in your desperation to get this problem solved, you may see all these grand claims of these products and jump in and say, um, yeah, I'll give it a go. You're just wasting your money, if you ask me. Uh, say hello to a few more people so I don't miss out. Um, hi to Robert. Good morning, Robert. Um, I just, I, for a minute there, Robert, I thought you just put, I've just ordered a drink. Can I show this? Um, yeah, I just, this is the comment I saw. I thought that said, I've just ordered a drink. Just ordered drink by David Nutt. Um, this is a really good book. It's not a stop drinking book, though, is it? Have you, have, you haven't got it yet, but you'll, um, you'll see when you get it. It's not a stop drinking book. Um, David Nutt. Ooh, why did it do that? 
David Brink. Very good reviews. Um, this is quite interesting because Dr. David Nutt was the government, the UK government's drug czar back in the 90s, I think, I'm guessing here, but I think he was the drug czar under Tony Blair and the Labour leadership of the like late 90s. Um, and this book is quite um, an open-minded approach. At no point during this is he trying to persuade you to stop drinking. He's just being a scientist about it. He's just laying out the facts. He's saying, look, this is what people think it does. The reality is it does this. If you drink it long enough, this is going to happen, and this is going to be the consequences. He doesn't ever suggest you stop drinking. He's basically just saying, look, if you want to understand what this drug is doing to you, here's the information. So, yeah, it's uh, it's certainly worth a listen or um, a read if you buy it. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, Robert. How does Zach, two years sober? Uh, it's got to be about education, about it all, correct. Um, Robert says, no magic pill for drinking. Unfortunately, true. Uh, no worries, says, hey, Craig, 51 days, no evil clown. Oops, corrected it. Uh, actually says 53 days. Fantastic, and congratulations. So let's go back to these books. Um, let see what else is good here that I'd recommend you get. Uh, Annie Grace. Uh, this Naked Mind, Control Alcohol, as you can see, gets huge ratings. Um, and it has to be good because she quotes me often in it. <laughs> um, I'd love to speak to her and know uh, when, when she read my book, how soon after it did she quit drinking and how much it played a part in her own journey. A lot, I haven't read this, but people rave about this book, The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober by Catherine Gray. And as you can see, it gets very good scores. Um, Worth a read by all accounts. I haven't got around to it yet. This guy knows what he's talking about. Alcohol lied to me. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Jason Vale. Jason Vale is a good one to have a look at. Um, now, Jason is a ex uh, Alan Carr Easy Way therapist. So I think he pretty much took everything he learned from Alan Carr and wrote his own book. He doesn't do a lot of promotion for this. You won't see him talking about it very much because Jason Vale is, uh, well, these days he's known as the juice master. Uh, alcohol was really just this one-off thing that he did. But if you if you search for Jason Vale, in fact, look, you'll see here, uh, Jason Vale, a.k.a. the juice master. He basically, his whole career is about promoting juicing as a, as a health benefit. So he promotes these kind of juicing diets and things like that. That's his main focus. Alcohol is a little little project he did a many many years ago and didn't return to but it's still a very good book uh sober diaries is apparently good i've not read it but i hear good things about it um and this one is worth a look as well because uh, it's new uh how to quit alcohol in 50 days uh, i'm not sure why the days have a relevance but uh, and i don't know a lot about simon chapel but i do know the guy that he's teamed up with um, to write this, uh, and that is William Porter. Uh, and William Porter is a fantastic expert in this field and wrote two amazing books, Alcohol Explained and Alcohol Explained 2. Uh, Alcohol Explained. Yeah. Look at these reviews. Very good. Excellent book. If you've not, if you've not read this and you are looking for something to buy, this is a Really, really good one. He has such a logical, easy to follow way of explaining what alcohol does to you and uh, and how he got out of the trap of uh, of using it on a daily basis. So, if William's involved, then how to quit alcohol in fifty days has got to have some credentials behind it. It's got to be worth a look at. Um, so, um, Let's see if we can go back to the main page, see if there's anything else that we've missed, and then I'll go to questions. So if you've got any questions at all, any concerns, need any advice, then post them up now. I'm coming to you in just a moment. Um, what else is good in here? The, the problem is there's a, there's a lot there now, and a lot of them are not there with the best of intentions. The more you scroll down, the more you're going to start coming across books that were written, not because they have a desire to help people stop drinking, but because they wanted to make money out of a niche subject. Uh, look, here's one here. 
and you'll see a lot of these. They're, they're written, they're self-written and published on Amazon ACX and Kindle. Uh, they're generally not very well researched. They're rushed. There's a lot of spelling mistakes in them. Um, I don't know this book, but it gets very poor ratings. Generally, they, they're very short as well. You can just see the laziness of the author <laughs> screaming through. And look, look at this. 30 pages long. I mean, why bother? Why bother even publishing it? What are the reviews saying? Um, quite disappointed and superficial. I expected more. You expected more from a 30-page book. Yeah. Um, this book is a rehash of conventional knowledge about drinking too much that anyone who's ever waken up with a hangover already knows. Reading this was a waste of my time that I will never get back. At least the book wasn't too expensive, which supports the adage you get what you pay for. In this case, not much. Oh, I love it. Right. Uh, so uh, let's do some questions. I can get rid of that now. Um, let's see who we've got here. Uh, so if you've got any questions, uh, any concerns, need any coaching, you need advice, uh, got a very specific issue that's come up for you, then post it up now and I'll do my best to answer it for you or in the very least, make something up that sounds plausible. Uh, Jake Bolton resisted the Christmas relapse, uh, relapse. So that marks nine months. Your YouTube channel has been a big help. Thank you very much. And congratulations on getting through Christmas easily the most difficult time of the year. Um, let's have a look. Uh, no worries. Really appreciated your course. The book about mortality, no limits. Forgive me. The title is escaping me infinity. I think you mean, um, uh, the content was very profound. Much of my fears and triggers have to do with the topic. I don't know if you saw the other day, no worries. I made a video um, about something Dr. Raymond Moody said uh, in his book. This was in the 1970s. And he made quite a bold statement. He said that all addiction is just evidence of lack of spiritual wisdom. Uh, and if you're not a spiritual person or if you're an atheist or something like that, you'd be quite offended by a statement like that. But what, what he's basically saying is, from a spiritual point of view, he's saying, look, this is not the only life you have. When you die, there is more. Consciousness does not end at the end of life. And so he's, he's starting from the premise that there is life after death. And he's saying, if you were aware of that, if you knew that for sure and you knew that there was a reason for this life and you were going on to do something else, then you wouldn't drink. You wouldn't take any addictive substance because you would be so focused on the moment and appreciating life for what it is that you wouldn't want to spoil it by adding in any sort of addictive substances. Quite, quite interesting, um, although controversial. Uh, but thanks for your comment. Um, once the triggers are cleared, the clown loses his knife. Yeah, look, the thing is, if, you, if you're struggling with cravings at the moment, maybe you stop drinking as a New Year's resolution. The thing you've got to, you've got to remember is your craving to drink alcohol is not something that's going to torture you all day. It's going to come in waves, and those waves are quite short. They're like 10 seconds long, right? So if you get that sensation, oh, I really want to drink, just tell yourself this is it's going to be over in seconds. Even quicker if you distract yourself or use tapping therapy or something like that. Just distract yourself. And you might think, well, Craig, I can't spend the rest of my life distracting myself. But you won't have to. Because eventually you'll get to the point where these, these craving episodes, they get further and further apart. And they get weaker and weaker and weaker. So try not to freak yourself out by you know, predicting too much into the future. Just in this moment, when you get a craving, tell yourself it'll be over in seconds. Be over in seconds. Just distract myself. Um, Sarah Jenka, your voice is a dream to listen to. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, here we go. Julianne uh, Negro, I'm seven months sober. Life is amazing. I even got through New Year's Eve sober. New Year's Eve is a... There's a weird experience sober, isn't it, uh, Julian? I don't know if you noticed this. If you go out New Year's Eve, because people drink really heavily, don't they? It's 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 weird. You can the, the evening goes in sections. 
the start of the evening, you're kind of on the level with everyone else. Nobody's drunk yet. You're, you're enjoying being sociable. And then it moves into the drunken bit. And you start thinking, this is like, you know, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. You're thinking, oh, I might just go home. Because people have started to talk nonsense. But you know, I've got to stay till midnight because it would be rude not to. So you, you, you carry on through the annoying bit and you get to the just insane bit where people start having arguments people start cheating on partners and it's carnage to watch. It's fascinating as a sober person to go out on New Year's Eve. Um, Ricky, when is your next boot camp? That's a really tough one, Ricky, because there's, I have multiple problems with that. COVID is just a nightmare. It's still is a nightmare. I'm, I went to England two days ago and to go to England for five days, I've had to have 11 COVID tests. It's insane. They're so strict here. And trying to work out the regulations of each country is just a nightmare. I had to have a test before I left, a test when I landed, a test before I came back, a test when I landed. And now I have to have a test every day for six days. And I'm triple vaccinated. It's nuts. So COVID is making it almost impossible to plan a boot camp at the moment. Um, so watch this space. <laughs> be honest, when COVID started, I thought it'd be over within three months. So watch this space and I'll, I'll tell you what, as soon as I can. Um, addiction is like a clip coupon for God that can never get redeemed. You've gone all deep on me. What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Tom is here. Tom, um, I spent sober Christmas and New Year's Eve, had one slip recently. Um, and it's good that except really brutal headache after I really hate the taste now. Most struggling is to overcome boredom and learn to do things with a clear head. Yeah. You know, I talk about this at boot camp. One of the one of the offshoots of quitting drinking is you get a vast amount of time. Suddenly days are have 24 hours in them, whereas before they had about 16. So suddenly your day is much longer, and that sounds like a huge benefit. And it is, but initially it's not because you find yourself sitting going, what the hell am I going to do? What the hell am I going to do for the next five hours? Uh, and I have, I have that problem still, and that's why I have to constantly come up with new things to entertain me. This is why I, I've been working on properties, and I've been working on my boat, and doing all these things, but you you have to consciously fill your diary. Otherwise, you if you've spent decades drinking, you will find yourself sitting there at some point going, and now what? What am I going to do? So it's a good thing and a bad thing. You can make it a good thing if you make sure that you're always planning. Never have an empty diary. Always know what you're going to be doing today and line up stuff. Force yourself to do things that you wouldn't normally do and, and such like. Thank you for the comment, Tom. I really appreciate it. Uh, no worries. Uh, plane, uh, aeroplane flights remain a super trigger for me as well. The turbulence is unbearable. Um, I've only ever been able to endure it with substance. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. The, um, it still irritates me to this day. If you fly business class, um, or first class and you see all your fellow passengers being poured champagne, now, it's not that I want the champagne. It's just that I feel like, okay, I've paid $3,000 for this ticket. And I'm getting probably $300 less service <laughs> than the guys who are drinking the champagne. I know it's stupid, but it's, it still irritates me. And there's only one airline I've been on um, that you don't get that feeling, and that's uh, Qatar, Qatar Airlines. Because... Because obviously it's a Muslim country, they have um, they have a amazing selection of mocktails and non-alcoholic champagne. You know, normally when you get on a plane, you look at the the wine list if you're flying business class. It'll say you know, Krug champagne or something, and then under non-alcoholic, it's like tonic water, sparkling water. You're like, woo, thanks. But if you fly some of these Eastern airlines like Qatar, you turn to the non-alcoholic section. And they've got these amazing mocktails fantastic um, non-alcoholic champagnes. Very good. But I know what you mean about flights. They're difficult. Morning, David. Welcome on in. Uh, Zach, 
Uh, you saved my life, mate. You are very welcome, and I'm very pleased to hear that, Zach. Um, Dean's here from Australia. Does anyone else not care about that tennis player? Is it Djokovic? Everyone's banging on about this. I couldn't care. Honestly. <laughs> anyway, that's a different subject. Uh, hi, Summer. I hope you're looking after Dean there. Um, David. I'm hungover every morning. Do you think that after 15 years of drinking a pint every day on average will give me withdrawal? Give me withdrawal, I'd have to go to the ER. I'm hungover every morning. You drink one pint of beer? What is the pint of, David? It's uh, that That's kind of important. Um, look, I... It's difficult for me to answer your question, A, because I don't know what the substance is, but B, I'm not a doctor uh, and I'm not here to give medical advice. Um, so you need to put that question to a doctor, really. Uh, and you need to, because if, if withdrawal is going to be a problem for you, then you do need some medical assistance in dealing with that. Otherwise, it could be dangerous. Now, for most people who are problem drinkers, the withdrawal sensation is no more than what you would call mild anxiety. It's got a jittery feeling like, oh, and it, in fact, you vocalize it by saying, oh, I could do with a drink. But for some people who are physically dependent on alcohol, as in you can no longer function without it, then you will go through withdrawal. It will be unpleasant. And if you have underlying health conditions like epilepsy or, or something like that, then it can trigger a grand mal seizure, which can be very dangerous. So don't take a, don't gamble. Don't, look for my advice. Don't just get your doctor's opinion on that and ask for a supervised withdrawal. I know in, in Australia, they're very good. They will send someone around to your house every day for a week just to check on you and make, give you some meds and make sure you're okay. They don't do that in a lot of countries, but I, in Australia, I know they do that and it, it's very good. But speak to your doctor. Um, Julianne says, I recommend salsa dancing. You won't see anyone drunk. We all tend to drink water. They teach beginners too. New Year's Eve, I danced until 3 a.m. The dance party went on until 6 a.m. at the hotel. You have as much rest as you want. Absolutely. Judo used to be my thing, Julianne. I used to love judo. Um, I can't do it anymore because I've got a dodgy hip. But uh, exercising and learning something is, is a fantastic use of your sober time. Um... Uh, wow, I need to check out uh, Air Qatar. <laughs> yeah, I'm not on a backhander from the airline, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm just saying that it's the only airline I've ever flown with that uh, I didn't feel like I was, you know, missing out on some of the theater of it all. Uh, Manny, hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Sharon, welcome on in. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for your book. You're welcome, Sharon. Uh, from the UK, by the look of it, a proud NHS worker. My daughter is also an NHS worker. Pint of bourbon. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing a pint of bourbon is probably it's probably over half a bottle, isn't it? Um, you need medical. You need a medical opinion on that, David. Uh, I know that it's probably frustrating for me to say that, but it's it's quite a lot of alcohol. Um, and I don't want you to have a bad bad experience coming off it. But don't let that put you off getting started. You just need a bit of help, and there's nothing wrong with asking for a bit of help. That's you know, there's a load of stigma around this drug, isn't there? You know, you get addicted to alcohol, and people act like you're some sort of weakling, like there's something wrong with you, like you're just a terrible broken person. And if you think about it, that doesn't make any sense at all because getting addicted to an addictive substance surely is the logical conclusion of your actions. That's what's supposed to happen. To pity people who get addicted to alcohol and think there's something wrong with them is it would be like going to a burns ward and then looking down on all the people who got burnt and, and claiming they had weak skin. Oh, that's why you got burnt, because your skin's not good enough. It's nonsense. You know, fire burns you, alcohol gets you addicted. It's just the logical conclusion of your actions. So don't feel any shame um, and don't let it put you off asking for help. You know, the alcohol companies are just as evil and devious as the tobacco companies, and they have a very narcissistic way of peddling their drug, and it gets people hooked, and it destroys lives. So it's not your fault. 
but it's your responsibility to get out of the trap. Jerome. Hi, Craig. Good to see you. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, watching on YouTube. Mick says, spent £12,000. I would have spent on alcohol building bikes, steel carbon track row, TT bikes. You get the picture. Yes, I wondered where my uh, what I'd do with my time at first, not now. So true, isn't it, Mick? You got you got to do what you're passionate about. The thing, and the I think it's helpful if you think back to what you used to do when you were a kid, when you never considered money or time or anything. You just did it because you loved it. Do that again. There'll be things that you did as a kid that you've not done done since, or you dumped twenty years ago because alcohol stole them from you, and you can't do them uh, when you're drunk. Go back and do those things. The chances are those things you picked out as a kid are the things you you would do for the rest of your life without ever being paid for them. Tinkering about with motorbikes and things like that, fantastic. I have my boat. Um, I'm a bit worried because it's out of the water for a month now for repairs. What will I do with my time? But I just like being on my boat tinkering about. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, eight ounces. Get some help, David. You'll be fine. Look, you've you've made a you've made a decision. You're not you're not in denial anymore. So many people in your situation are in complete denial. They're drinking, you know, a pint of whiskey a day, and they don't even question it. They've pushed it so back, far back into the back of their their mind that they're not even questioning it anymore. At least you're saying, look, I'm not happy with this. It's making me miserable. I want to do something about it. So you're already in a different group of people. You just need to take that next step now. And you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Other people have done it. Other people have escaped. You can do it too. Um, Bill, four years, thanks to you. Life's so much better. Four years is fantastic, Bill. So good. Keep going. Uh, Craig uh, says, love the book and meditation. Um <laughs> remind me, Cotton Eye Joe, remind me what you're an expert on again. Three videos in three days, lol. Thank God I wasn't relying you. <laughs> I do apologize. Yeah. I know, fair enough. I, I haven't done a lot of videos lately. Uh, like I said at the start, uh, I've kind of been distracted. Um, the, the, the truth is, Google doesn't like my website anymore. A couple of years back, Google loved my website, and I was so busy. It was like I was dealing. That was hundreds of emails a day, and I was const, I was having to work constantly on my website, and so I was making videos as well. And for something happened, and Google decided they didn't like me anymore. So if you look now, when you search for me, I'm like down on page three of Google. So actually, my website's a lot quieter these days, and um, so I wasn't working as much on this, and I got distracted by other projects. I've been um, renovating properties here in Cyprus. So I've been covered in cement and paint for the last kind of six months, something like that. So apologies for the lack of content. I will try and keep to my New Year's resolution to do these more often because people say they find them valuable. So I will, I promise. Um, do you still do the tapping techniques for your own recovery? Do you still get strong cravings, even just psychologically? Um, I, I don't do tapping as much as I should do, to be honest with you. I should. Um, I have something very strange happen to me with cravings. I get, uh, it's normally one period a year and it's not a set period. It's not like it's winter or summer or anything like that. I have one period a year where this wave of cravings come over me. And it's been happening so long now that I, I recognize it for what it is. I know that it's gonna last a few days. I know for a few days, I'm gonna be in this really confusing state. And it is confusing because I don't know where it comes from and I don't know why it arrives. It's about it's like a week or so. And then it goes again and I forget about it until it arrives again. So uh, you're right. I should use tapping in those moments. But I, I normally just sit there scratching my head going, why is this happening? <laughs> um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Rally Chopper is your next bike, Mick. Rally Chopper. Is that the one with the, the gear stick in the middle? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? I had a I had a rally grifter, um, which I think followed the chopper. Anyway, um, David says I think they want people to be drunk as to not think about what they're doing to us. Who knows? Who knows how Google works? I've tried to work it out, but um, uh, to no avail. 
Anyway, look, uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, I promise I will do another one soon. So keep an eye out for your notifications. Thank you so much uh, for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll speak soon, I promise. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning, no hangover, no guilt, no regret, just full of energy and vitality. That is the life that is waiting for you. And the best time to get started on this sober journey is right now. And trust me on this, I've been there and done it. I've tried everything, every quirk, every gimmick, every rehab. I've tried AA, prescription medication, hypnosis, cold turkey, willpower, you name it, I tried it. And none of it worked. Until I worked out the secret, the mindset that you have to have if you want to kick alcohol into touch forever. Commit to your happy, sober future right now. Go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com forward slash webinar and book your slot on the next free quit drinking coaching program. You'll even get a free copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a gift just for watching the webinar. If you're serious about this, make today the day you do something about it.